Hey guys, or oh, Mikats here, and today I will be answering to you guys' Ruby related questions. I know I'm very late in making this video, it's been months, you guys have sent me your questions months ago, but I wasn't feeling well at the time, like I wasn't feeling ready to make a video like this, so that's why I was like delaying it. And I think it's better since we don't have Ruby and we're in that goddamn hiatus, it's it's so evil, this hiatus is so evil. So I thought perhaps it would be better for you guys to see this video in the hiatus since, you know, this is also Ruby content, so yeah, I hope you guys will enjoy it. But yeah, I think I should start right away because I have a lot of questions and like, I recently made a reminder about it and I made a community post on YouTube again and I got 20 more questions about Ruby. So I'm gonna try to answer to most of them, but I don't know if I can like go through all of them today or like I can answer to them all. Like it's kind of hard because as you might have noticed, I ramble a lot and there are just a lot of questions and I love Ruby. So yeah, I better get started. Okay, so the first question that I've gotten was submitted by Anonymous on my Ruby blog on Tumblr, so... Anonymous said, how old were you when you got into Ruby? Also, what drew you to liking it so much and do you like any other Rooster Teeth series? Okay, I actually talked about how I got into Ruby in like more detail on my Volume 5 soundtrack reaction after I reacted to All That Matters. Like, I'm gonna put a timestamp here and if you want you can go and check out my Volume 5 soundtrack reaction and watch that part of the video because I talked like half an hour as to how I ended up in Ruby, ended up like discovering Ruby. But I discovered Ruby in June 2017 and I was 22 years old in June 2017. Right now I'm almost 24, I'm gonna be 24 this April so I'm getting old, holy shit, time flies. Also, what do you view to liking it so much and do you like any other Rooster Teeth series? Okay, so in my other Q&A videos, I believe it was in the second one or the third one, I talked in more detail about what kind of shows I like, like in general, in books and movies or TV shows, you know, and Ruby is like the perfect example of what I like in a show, like in terms of the world itself and in terms of story-wise and in terms of characters. Like, it is so rare for me to like this much the world, the character, the story of a show. Like, you know, usually you like probably like the characters but don't like the story itself or perhaps you're not that invested in that world. But in Ruby, I love all of these things. I'm in love with the characters because there are a lot of characters that I relate to in Ruby like that I relate to because of my life and I'm gonna be I'll be talking about that in more detail in the next question that I've gotten and I love the world because I love fantasy worlds I love like weapons and stuff and Ruby is a show where the protagonists are all women you know like it is rare to see a show where women is women are not sexualized or like they're not side characters and like in Ruby women are the main characters this is a show about four girls and they're all so great like they're such a great representation of the women in this world that's why I love Ruby so much besides that the story is just so interesting to me like, I'm so curious about the lore in the show, and thankfully Volume 6 gave us a lot of the lore in Ruby. There is still a lot of unknown stuff about the world of Remnant, but we got a lot of information in Volume 6, and it only made me love the show more. Another reason is because of Ruby, I found out Rooster Teeth. And honestly, I've never liked a company like this before. I never supported a company like this. Like, I've been a first member for a year and a half now. 
I've been supporting this company ever since I discovered Ruby, ever since I discovered the people who work in Rooster Teeth, and ever since I learned more about Monty and like the people in Ruby in general. Like there are a lot of people who work in Ruby that I stand, that I like look up to. Like Barbara Dunkelman, like Aaron Zach, Lindsay Jones, Kara Everly. Miles Luna and Marielle. I don't know how to pronounce her last name, but you know, um, she's an always open. And there are many more people who work in Rooster Teeth and see all these people doing their jobs. Like, I felt the need to support this company as much as I could. And now I'm trying to support the company by being a first member and by doing reaction videos since they're also like getting money from reaction videos. So yeah, to answer to your other part of the question, do you like any other Rooster Teeth series? Yes, I do. I I mean, I mean, besides Ruby, of course I watch Ruby Chibi. I watch Day 5. Be sure to check it out if you haven't, but it's first ex exclusive like it is such a great show. I love always open it's Barbara Dunkelman's and Marielle's um, podcast I follow that podcast all the time and I watch Nomad of Nowhere and I watch Red vs Blue I don't know if you've seen seen them but I also make reaction videos for Nomad of Nowhere and Red vs Blue so yeah I watched other Rooster Teeth content but like there are a lot of reasons as to why I love Ruby so much like it's just the perfect show for me like don't even get me started on the LGBT representation so I'm also an LGBT member and it is so rare to see a representation of yourself this well written like in Ruby like Ruby helped me a lot in many ways. Ruby helped me a lot in terms of accepting myself. Like seriously, Ruby helped me a lot. Ruby is more than a show for me. Ruby is the reason I started making YouTube. Ruby is the reason as to why I started to talk about my sexuality more freely. Ruby changed my life and I'm not exaggerating when I say that. It's really changed my life. If it weren't for Ruby, I wouldn't be here. You guys wouldn't see me on YouTube. And I would have probably still hate myself because I was hating myself because of my sexuality. And, you know, I grew up in a really homophobic country. It's one of the worst places on earth to be. Um, for LGBT members and you know people usually hate LGBT members here it's like you might even get fired from your job if someone would learn that you're LGBT like we have nothing we have no rights and it's just so hard to accept ourselves here like I, even up to this date, it's so rare for me to like see people who are openly LGBT because we are afraid. We are afraid of the people, of the people in here. And Ruby helped me in a lot of ways. Since I don't see that representation here, I don't see it. So seeing a world in which LGBT members are welcomed and they're not being treated as something like demons or, or something wrong. It's... It's really affected me. I don't know if you've seen my volume 6, episode 6 reaction, but I got really emotional. I I'm sorry, it was not episode 7, I think. But when we introduced to Koda Ark family, I got so emotional. Because I've never seen a representation of myself like that before. It was so subtle, it wasn't the focus, and it happened. And like, I forgot to mention, and I'm watching Genlock, of course, and I love that show, and I also love the representation in Genlock. I'm not gonna talk about it if you haven't seen it, but be sure to watch Genlock. 
it's an amazing show. It is an amazing show. And like I said, like, I've never seen a representation like that. Um, I'm just rambling at this point, but I love Ruby because of a lot of things. Like, a lot of things. I, I'm so grateful to the people who made this show. Like, it changed my life as a person. I'm a real person, and this show, this animated show, changed my life. Literally changed my life. I'm even planning on making a separate video about the representation, but it's gonna be more focused on Bumblebee. Um, a separate video about this, and some people on Tumblr know about this. I still haven't started working on it, but I have the materials on my hands, and I'm gonna make a separate video to show my appreciation. But yeah, I've been rambling for too long, let's go to the other question. So, the second question is from my friend Hammer Time. Hey Hammy! And her first question was about something about furries, so yeah, that's why she's starting with anyways. This is her second question to me. Um, since we all love overused questions, make a top 5 weapons, characters and songs in Ruby. I don't think I have ever heard your opinions on these. You haven't heard my opinions on these, really? We've never talked? That's weird. That's weird. But okay, my top 5 weapons. I mean, my answer would have been different before Volume 6, but now that I've seen Volume 6... Um... I, I gotta admit, Maria Calavera's weapons are my favorite now. It was always Yang's and Bersalica, but like, goddamn Maria's sights they're called life and death and she's using them with gravity dust and like those sights are so freaking cool guys those sights are so freaking cool i love her weapons they're my top favorite now they're my top favorite like they're my favorite definitely without a question they're my favorite my second favorite weapon is amber celica I mean Yang's weapons because because I'm familiar with the Brawler style like because I did boxing I haven't been going to the boxing gym for a while now because of some health issues but I'm familiar with punching and stuff so her weapons are my second favorite I mean they're just so easy to use like they're on your wrists and they're just so easy to carry and stuff you know they're just great I think I think Yang's a genius to be able to design something like that since they're designing their own weapons in Signal Academy I mean it's just great my third favorite weapon is Gamble Shroud rip seriously rest in pieces <laughs> Gamble Shroud it's broken now it's broken because of freaking Adam but hopefully we're gonna see an update for Blake's weapon, or perhaps she's gonna fix Gamble Shroud, I don't know. But yeah, Gamble Shroud, guys. It's my third favorite because it's so useful to use. Like, you have. You can use it in three, three ways. You have the sheet, you have the sword, and you have that ribbon thing. I don't know what it's called, but like. You can use it in a lot of ways, and I just love Blake's fighting style. Like, her fighting style is amazing, and I love her weapon. I really love her weapon. I think my fourth favorite is Crow's Sight Sword thing. Um, I don't remember its name though. I, I, I knew its name, but I forgot. But yeah, Crow's weapon, because again, it's just so cool. You can use that as a scythe, you can use it as a weapon, you can use it as a sword. I, I just love his weapon a lot. I think my fifth favorite is Velvet's weapon. I mean, Velvet's camera. I mean, it can literally copy other people's weapons and make you use their weapons. Like, it's just so cool. Velvet's weapon is amazing, in my opinion. My top favorite songs. Okay, from the top of my head. Without order, by the way. I love Nevermore. Guys, I love Nevermore. I listened to it like more than 50 times ever since uh, ever since my first time hearing it in volume 6 finale it is just so good i burn 
is another favorite of mine. I Burn is my one of my all-time favorites. Just I just love that song so much. Path to, Path to Isolation is another favorite of mine. And again, this life is mine is just so good. Like Weiss's songs are just so great. And I also love Red Like Roses. And weirdly enough, even though like I don't ship Black Sun or anything, and I don't think it's a shipping song e song either way, but I love like Morning Falls Night because its melody is so great. I just don't like the rap parts, and it's because like I don't like rap personally, but I love the song. How many songs did I just count? I don't remember. But yeah, I can't choose though. Like, there's all that matters. Like, there's Bumblebee. Like BMBLB, it's it's one of my favorites. Okay, okay. Uh, forget about like Morning Falls Night. BMBLB is another favorite of mine. Yeah, I think these are my top favorites. I don't even know how many songs that I counted just now, but anyway. So the other part of your question is my favorite characters, and I got the same question again from Nom Pancakes. And hey there, Nom. <laughs> Who are your top favorite characters in Ruby and why? So I'm gonna, okay then, I'm gonna count my top favorite characters and I'm gonna talk about why I love them personally. So my favorite character, I mean, I don't know, can you, can you tell me, can you, do you, do you have any guesses or anything? Like, I don't know. Do you have any guesses? Oh, it's, it's so hard to find my favorite character, don't you think? <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. Yang is my favorite character, she always has been and always will be. And uh, it's because of personal reasons, obviously. So I love Yang because I relate to her a lot. I relate to her a lot. I mean, first, let me, let me tell you this, like, I like characters that I relate to. I mean, this is different for everyone. Some people like the characters that they look up to. To me, it's more like if I see a part of myself in a character, it automatically makes me love them. Like, I always search for that in the shows that I'm watching or in the books that I'm reading, and if I find something relatable, then I like that character automatically. And it also affects my thinking of that, the writing of the show, because to me, if I see a relatable character, that makes me think that the writing is good because you know I'm an actual human being and that's a fictional character but if I relate to a fictional character that shows that the writing is good that's why I think that Ruby's writing is so freaking good like kudos to Miles and Carrie they created they their writing very relatable characters in my opinion and that's the reason as to why I love this show so much like I also talked about it in my other Q&A videos but I don't like white characters or black characters I love gray characters in this regard like they're not perfect they're making mistakes and they're relatable they're human okay that's why I love this show so much so I'm gonna list my five characters based on the most relatable to least relatable. So Yang is my favorite because she's so relatable to me. Like, I see myself in Yang a lot. And there are a couple of reasons for that. Like, one of them is her past. Her past is so freakishly similar to mine. Like, when I first watched Burning Burn the Candle season 2 episode 6, I got freaked out because it was so similar to mine. So. You know, in, in Yang's story, Yang's mom left her. Her dad tried to look for his daughters, and Yang had to look for her sister. She had to get mature a lot. She had to deal with a lot of things on her own. You know, she had to become an adult so fast, and you know, that's why she has. That's why she has abandonment issues and like her whole character. Okay, so in, in in my case, this was the opposite. My dad left me when I was little and he decided to like make his own family and he didn't give a shit about me for years. And it's still kind of the same. And my mom tried to take care of me for years 
And I also have a stepsister now, and she's the reason as to why I started to talk with my dad after years, because I wasn't talking with my dad at all. And, and then I had a sister while I was 17, and like, yeah, she's 17 years younger than me, and she's in elementary school now. She's such a smart kid, and she's the reason as to why I started to go and see my dad and his wife again. Because I love my sister so much, even though she's my stepsister, like, I would die for her. Like, she's so important to me, and she loves me so much, and she looks up to me, and I'm just trying to be there for her. And I see the same thing in Yang, and I see the same issues that I have in Yang, which is, you know, like the abandonment issues and trust issues and her personality in general. So like I said, I'm a real person and this is my past and this stuff happens in real life and they shape the person that I am today. And you know, there's Yang's past and how she's becoming an adult and it is just so freakishly similar to my personality. And that proves that these people, Monty, Miles and Carrie, they are so freaking good writers. If you can make a fictional character like that based on her past and her current personality, if it's similar to me, a real person, then kudos to you, that is freaking good writing. And don't even get me start, start about her like depression and her PTSD and stuff. It's just so freakishly similar to my experiences. That's why I love her so much and that's why her story is the one that I'm most invested in. That's why I'm so curious as to what Miles and Carrie are gonna do with Yang. Because like I said, it's just so similar to me and I see my 18 year old self in her. Like, it's, it's just so similar. But anyway, my second favorite is Black Belladonna, and it's because of the same reasons. Because she is relatable. Because I had some similar experiences as her, and I've been through racism, and that's probably the biggest reasons as to why I relate to Blake, and you know, how she's trying to hide herself, and whatnot. And I, I'm trying to do the same thing because I've been through racism while I was in a different country. I know how it feels to be oppressed, so that's why I relate to her and and her relationship with Adam. Unfortunately, it's also relatable for me, even though mine wasn't that worse. Uh, <laughs> still, though, I relate to Blake. And like, I just love her so much, I love her so much. Some people don't like her because, you know, she made mistakes, she ran away and whatnot, but like, that makes her real. She's learning from her mistakes, so she's just so great. Another thing that I relate to for Blake is, you know, Blake is bisexual, it's kind of far. I mean, it's kind of canon at this point, she dated with Adam with a guy, but now she has feeling for Yang, and for me it's the same. Like, I dated the guys, but then I started to accept my sexuality as a bisexual person, so I relate to her in this regard as well. So, yeah, I just love Blake, okay? Just, I wanna protect her at all costs, like, she's, she's amazing, I love her. My third favorite is Weiss Schnee, and again because of how she is relatable to me and because of her character development. So when I first saw Weiss in volume 1, I was like, okay, I don't like this girl. I don't like this girl, but as time went on, she grew up a lot, like, you can actually see that freaking development on her. And I think this is similar for everyone. But another reason as to why I like her that much is because of her relationship with her father. And I've been through similar things while I was a kid because of my dad. And even up to this date, I'm trying to be 
different than my father, even though he isn't evil like Jack Schnee, but still, I have my reasons as to why I don't want to be like my dad, and I have, you know, some similar memories with my dad, just like how Weiss is dealing with her father. And that's another thing as to why I love the Weiss. But yeah, my top favorites are these three characters, and like I said, it's because I found them relatable. But from now on, the other two characters that, that I'm gonna say are not relatable for me at least, but I just love them as characters. Okay, so my fourth favorite is Ruby Rose. Like, Ruby is just so precious, guys, and I gotta admit, she wasn't in my top five before volume six. I was finding her underdeveloped, even though she's like the main character of the show, but I I was like, you know, she didn't get a lot of development compared to the other members of Team Ruby and whatnot, but Volume 6 changed that. Like I always loved Ruby, but she wasn't that interesting to me, if that makes sense, because I didn't find her relatable and I didn't find the focus that I wanted, but volume 6 changed that, now I can see the development in her and she's just so precious, I love how she's trying to keep everyone else together, I love how she's trying to be the leader, you know, I love how she's taking the burden for everyone, like I just love Ruby so much, she's my fourth favorite. And my fifth favorite is, again, my answer was gonna be different before volume 6. But now my fifth favorite is Maria Calavera. Guys, she is amazing. I love her. I love her to death. I'm in love with her young self. That's another thing. But I also love that cranky old lady so much. Like, she's amazing. She's so sassy. She's chaotic good. Like, she's just amazing. I love her. I love her so much. And I also love her young self because of her design, her weapons, you know, she's just so cool. Like I said, I don't find her relatable or anything, but I just love her so much. So yeah, these are my five top favorite Ruby characters. Okay, now, a series of questions from my friend Lolo. And like, there are a lot of questions to go through. <laughs> Hey, awesome idea! I hope it's not too late to ask questions. It's obviously nice, I'm making this video months later, like, you're good. Okay, the first one, what are your favorite Ruby episodes? Like, top 3 or top 5? No need to rank them precisely. Okay, from the top of my head, like, Heroes and Monsters is always gonna be one of my favorites. Another favorite of mine is definitely the Epithy episode from Volume 6. Like, that Epithy Grim, it was just so well written. And it was, again, very relatable for me because I've been suffering from depression and, you know, I've been suffering from the Epithy. So, it was, again, so relatable and it was just such a great arc. I loved it. It's my favorite. Another favorite of mine is definitely Volume 6, Episode 11. I don't know if you've seen my reaction to it, but I freaked out so much. Like, that episode made me feel so freaking happy. It has a special place in my heart now, that's why it's my favorite. Another favorite of mine is definitely, again, Volume 6, Episode 12, because goddamn that Adam and Bee's arc, you know. It was great, the whole fighting scene with Adam, how they killed Adam, like, it was just so good. And an another favorite of mine is burning the candle because of personal reasons, like I said. That's the episode that made me like Yang so much and made me feel more invested in the show, just like Heroes on Monsters. So yeah, these are my favorite episodes. What are your favorite Ruby scenes? I mean... Do you mean like the places in Ruby or like certain moments in Ruby? I'm gonna assume that you're talking about the places in Ruby, so my top favorite is definitely Forever Fall and Whale. Like, 
fall is my favorite season and I just love it so much and like to be in a place where it's always fall in a forest like with fall leaves and all that I'm all up for it like just imagine watching those colors all the time so forever fall is my favorite and my other favorite is I mean after volume 6 it's Argus that place is just so beautiful it is great it's just so freaking beautiful I mean just perhaps it's the animation and whatnot but like I just love this and I guess I would love San Francisco if I ever go there later on since I think Argus is based on San Francisco in the US so yeah these two are my favorite scenes do you think we'll get or do you hope for a happy, bittersweet or sad ad ending to Ruby or at least the Sailor Mark? I'm definitely expecting a bittersweet ending. I mean, this is Ruby. <laughs> I'm sure it's gonna be a bittersweet one. Like, it's not gonna be 100% happy, it's not gonna be 100% sad. We're gonna get a bittersweet ending. We might even lose someone from Team Ruby or I don't know, like, this is a show in which a main character lost her freaking arm and this is a show where a fan favorite character got murdered so definitely a bittersweet ending is bumblebee a great ship or the greatest ship sorry i could not resist it is the greatest ship and i'm not exaggerating when i said say that like i've never shipped to fictional characters like this before it is just so great it is just so great in terms of representation it is so great in terms of storytelling it is the best romantic arc that I've ever seen do you think it would have been harder feels wise if you had experienced the end of volume 3 when it was released and wait nine months for volume 4 it was really hard for me oh I bet it was really hard and of course Lola I, I would have died like when I first watched volume 3's finale I was just so shook because you know my favorite character's arm chopped off and then Pyrrha died and everything went to hell like Blake ran and Yang was in depression and alone and Ruby was with the other members of team Juniper and we didn't have Beacon Academy anymore and I was like what the fuck am I watching? I mean the ending of volume 3 is the episode that sold me completely like after that episode I was a complete Ruby trash and if that episode was the last one that I've seen for 9 months I would have lost my shit like that would have been too painful not to mention watching volume 4 that would be painful too because you know team ruby was separate in volume 4 i mean i had the chance to binge watch volume 4 and then i had to wait for volume 5 but still it was hard because i couldn't wait the moment for them to get back together and you know how i was like in volume 5 i mean i know you see my reactions so it was hard, even that hiatus was hard, so I can't even imagine a hiatus after volume 3. So I kudos to you for going through all of that, like, you're strong, you're stronger than me. Like, I don't know what I would have done if I was there with you at the time. Apart from Ruby and Avatar The Last Airbender, The Legend of Korra, what other animes do you love? Um, okay, so I actually... I actually answered to this one in more detail in my other Q&A videos and I know that you've seen them so I'm not gonna talk about this one. Have you tried watching the new Shira on Netflix? It's the gayest anime cartoon I've ever watched and I mean it as the best compliment possible, it's wonderful. I just watched the first three episodes of Shira today, I mean, you know I made a Patreon and you're one of my patrons so thank you very much. Lola, like you're great thank you and you guys decided that I should watch Shira first so today I watched the first three episodes and I'm in love with the show I love the characters they're just so adorable like I love the music and like you said it looks really gay so it's it's great for me I could go on forever but I'll stop right here and hope for another round in the future <laughs> Well, yeah, um, I'm gonna make a Q&A livestream soon since it wasn't one of my rewards in 
Patreon, so yeah. Expect a Q&A live stream soon and you can ask me questions there. Thank you so much for these questions, Lolo. They were, they were great questions. Another question is, would you want to be a faunus or a human in Ruby? Definitely a faunus, because like I said, I relate to faunus. I mean, I definitely relate to faunus. And that's why I'd love to be a faunus. I guess I'd love to be a tiger faunus, because tigers are my favorite animals. And it's because like they're just so cool. I love tigers. Firecracker, hey there! A little random, but if you were a character in the Ruby, where would you like to live on Remnants? The cramped but warm island of Menagerie, bustling city of Whale, snow-covered but beautiful Atlas, Mistral, Vacuum, Patch... Oh my god, you're riding! Even you describing these places is like a rider. Like seriously, Firecracker, you're great at describing stuff. Like I was answering to Lolo's question, that would be forever fall in whale. And like, I'm used to city life, I mean I grew up in the capital city of my country, so I'm used to this city life and like I said, just forever fall man. Forever fall is just so freaking beautiful and I love fall. I love fall leaves, I love going outside and like walking between the trees in the fall. I just love Forever Fall, okay? <laughs> so it would definitely be Forever Fall. But I think I could also live in... Mistral. I can live there as well. Or like Argus. Argus is just so beautiful. If it weren't for Forever Fall, I would definitely say Argus, because it's just so freaking beautiful. Thank you for the question, Firecracker. You're great. I love you. Another question, if you had a semblance, what would it be? I think it would be something like controlling the vectors because it's just so cool. I don't know if you have seen Toaru Kagaku no Index, but there is this character called Accelerator. And ever since I watched that anime in high school, like, I always wanted to, like, have a power like him. He's basically controlling vectors, like, when he touches some place, like it can change the vectors, like it's kind of similar to telekinesis, but it's a little different, it's just so cool, it's so OP, it's great. Or it would be something like time, like I would love to reverse time to be able to make decisions, just like Max in Life is Strange game, like that would be a great semblance. So yeah, I would say either controlling vectors or controlling time, because they're just so cool and useful. Which musical instruments do you play? If none, which would you like to play? If you existed in Remnants, would you keep that instrument as a weapon, similar to Flint, or choose something else entirely? I'm sorry, I'm laughing because I play piano and I don't think using a piano as a weapon would be efficient. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just imagining myself like grabbing the piano and like throw it out on the enemies or <laughs> something like that. So yeah, um, I play piano, um, but I would never use that as a weapon <laughs> because that would be horrible, seriously. Generally Sorry asked me, what do you think of Ruby as a character in Ruby? P.S. I love your reactions. Generally Sorry, I always read your comments, I remember you, I know how you like writing and you always comment on my videos and I love you. Thank you for the question. I mean, I think I mentioned how I think of Ruby as a character. Like, I was thinking very differently about her before Volume 6, but now I'm thinking way different than I was before because she got development, you know. And I love Ruby so much. She's so precious. Like, just protect that little kid. Okay, I got tired of saying so I'm sorry. Let's see. The other question is from Krenai Senshi and they asked me on Tumblr a few questions outside of Ruby what other hobbies do you enjoy? And I love how you implied that Ruby is my hobby. I mean it is true it really is my hobby at this point. <laughs> I mean outside of Ruby uh, I do boxing I don't know if you can see my gloves here. Um, and I haven't been going to boxing for a while now because of some health issues, because of the medicine that I've been using. Besides that, I'm really into sports and I love playing tennis. And I 
also love Pilates and I love reading books. I love reading books so much. I especially love science books and philosophy books. Like I have a thing for space ever since I was in elementary school. I've been reading about scientists and space and if I was born in a different country I'd definitely try to be a scientist. But it was kind of hard in my country. I mean, my country doesn't give a shit about science, basically. So I really love science. That's the reason why I picked my major, actually. So yeah, I don't know if you call that a hobby, but I love science. Other than that, I love spending time with friends, you know. And listening to music is another huge hobby of mine. Like. I love listening to music and I'm such a nerd when it comes to music. Like I love making playlists based on my mood or based on their genres and I'm always on Spotify. Like seriously, I love discovering new bands, I love sharing music with other people. It's just like I love it. I'm a huge classic rock, progressive rock, blues rock, symphonic metal. Hard rock, like I'm fan of a lot of genres, classical music, epic music, like those movie soundtracks, like that's why I go crazy over Ruby soundtracks, Genlock soundtracks, I'm like, so I started watching Shira today and I love the music of Shira, like I just, I'm a huge nerd when it comes to music. Shipping wise, outside of Bumblebee, what are your three favorite ships? And why? Okay, shipping wise, my other ship is Renora, and honestly, I don't have any other ships because I usually don't care about it much, and I always ship the characters that I think that they're gonna be canon, if that makes sense. And Bumblebee is basically canon now, same as Renora. I think my other favorite would be the one with Coco and Velvet, even though I think Coco and Yatsuhashi are dating because of I'm the one song. Because in I'm the one, Casey says the line like, even if your girlfriend's purse can't save you or something, or I think it was Jeff Williams. Anyway, but it's a nice ship. Or. I don't know, Nuts and Dolls is a pure one. I mean, I had Canon Ruby as asexual and, you know, Penny was a robot and I just want, to, I just love to think them as a couple, as a like asexual couple or something, it's just so cute and it's just so pure. But like I said, I don't ship it, but I like seeing it, I mean, I love seeing that Nuts and Dolls episode on Ruby Chibi. It was just so great. It was so pure. But yeah, my ships are basically only Bumblebee and Renora. If the four girls of summonses evolve, which direction would you like to see the evolution take? Just for fun speculation, not meant to be a serious question. Oh boy, uh, it's getting close to 3.30 a.m. in here and I don't know if I can think of a good answer for this one right now. I mean, for Blake's semblance, I can totally see her, like, making other people's copies. And I personally think that she copied Yang's body in Volume 3 while she was trying to save her from Adam. For Yang, I don't know. I mean, since she's a Super Saiyan, even though I've never seen Dragon Ball, I think it would go with the same direction with that anime. <laughs> I mean, if you watch Dragon Ball, please tell me what's happening with Super Saiyan people as the time goes on. Oh, I'm also thinking that Yang is gonna be the Spring Maiden later on, so... I think that would also affect her semblance, maybe. I mean, I'm sure she's gonna get more powers because I'm thinking that Raven is gonna die at some point, and then her maiden powers are gonna go to Yang, so yeah. For Ruby and Weiss. I mean, for Weiss, I'm <laughs> thinking of her making an army of her summons or something. Like, seriously. I mean, her summons is already 
capable of a lot of things if you think about it, but I think she can make more... She can summon more Grim as time goes on. That's what I'm thinking. Like, I, I can just see her making a huge army when she gets older, like, seriously. And for Ruby, I don't know. Like, I don't know how her summons can evolve. I mean, it's about speed, you know? It's about speed and... She can get faster. <laughs> I'm sorry, I seriously can't think of anything at the moment. I'm just so tired. But yeah, thank you so much for the questions, Sanshi. Another series of questions from a friend of mine, one of my best friends in this fandom, Crimson. Hey there, Crim. So, let's start with your first question. Yang deserves to have abs, a green from 1 to 10. 11. She deserves abs, like she can literally grab a Grim's horns and then lift that Grim off, like she deserves abs. She has to have abs, like she needs to be buff. She's so powerful. Just give Yang abs 2k19, like seriously. Favorite scenery locations shown within Ruby, so like I said, it's Foreverfall and Argus. Favorite Nomad of Nowhere character? Oh, I'm gonna go with either Scout or Nomad. I love them both, they're adorable. Ren equals best boy? Exactly, Ren and Oscar. <laughs> they're, they're the best boys. Gemma character most looking forward to ones already liking just from what's been shown. I mean, when you ask this question, Jamlock wasn't around, but now we're in six episodes in. Um, so yeah, I can answer this question really easily. So, spoilers ahead if you haven't seen Jamlock, just past this part. My two favorites are Yasumon, I mean Yas, and Valentina. Or well. So, I love Yas be because of Again, she's so relatable to me. I mean, she's like a representation of myself in terms of some stuff. I mean, I, I made a post about this on Tumblr actually, but I'm not gonna talk about this here, but she's a great representation of me. So that's why I love Yas so much. And I love Valentina because she's so freaking amazing. And then I learned that she's gender fluid and I just love them more and more. I mean, it's my first time seeing a gender fluid character in a show, like, she's just so cool, I love her, I love those two, and I actually ship them, and you know it, I'm a, I'm a golden cloak trash, They're, it's their ship name, and like I said, I don't usually ship characters this easily, but like, the chemistry was there, and they remind me of Bumblebee, like, god bless the yellow and purple gaze, just, they're great. Feel free to skip over this one, hence why it's under the spoiler attack thing. How do you feel about certain people in the viewership's threatens towards female characters? Oh god, this is a good question, Grim. I honestly can't stand some people's viewership to female characters. I mean, at the end of volume 6, and how some people reacted to those few episodes, in volume 6 is the perfect example of that like some people out there thought that Ruby was ruined because their favorite character which is an abuser character an abuser male villain who is who's who's looking like a badass character he got killed by two of the protagonists two of the main characters in the show and it was you know self-defense and you know after that we got like some scenes about two female characters and they were romantically coded and some people also couldn't handle the fact that those two characters might be in love they think that it was ruining the show you know just because one of the side characters a villain at that got killed they thought that the show was ruined I mean 
like all of the example is there and some people even came to my videos and said stuff like they hate me because I was happy that Adam died and I was happy that Yang and Blake got rid of their abuser so and you know Adam is a fictional character and I'm a real person but yeah I so yeah how I feel about certain people in the weaverships threatens toward female characters I hate it I hate it and I think that they don't belong in this fandom because Ruby is a show about diversity and Ruby is a show that has female main characters and the show is focused on those characters like the show's name is Ruby the main initials of those four characters which are female so yeah but some people in the fandom are so used to seeing female characters in other animes and whatnot and there are just some anime fanboys that are salty over their favorite male characters and it's just uh, you know what? You know, you, you know how I feel. You know how I feel, seriously. It's not worth to talk about. But thank you for asking. Casper, good boy, great boy, or best boy. <laughs> so yeah, Casper is my dog's name. And Krim, Krim knows Casper. Of course he's the best boy. He's the best boy. But uh, he's not the best boy when he decides to poop in front of my bed when he gets angry at me. So yeah. But most of the time, he's the best boy. How much fun is it having a Maria in the show to come towards? For reasons outside of the fact. <laughs> okay, so we have we have a friend named Maria, and um, that's why Krim was asking me about this. It was great, Krim. I loved like saying stuff like, "Oh, I love Maria. She's great. I love her. She's amazing," and stuff like that. And I don't know if Maria has seen my reactions or not, but it was just so fun to say lines about Maria like that. So thank you for your question, Krim. Okay, I just finished the questions that you guys left all those months ago, and now I'm gonna check the most recent community post that I made to see you guys' questions. Okay, let's see, there are 23 questions here. Uh, and it's 3.30 a.m. But I'm gonna try my best. How or better said, what made you ship Bumblebee? And do you ship anything else? Okay, what made me ship Bumblebee? Um, I think I talked about it in other, other um, questions. I love it because it is just so well written. Like, I've never seen such a well written romantic story. Not for just women loving women relationships in general it's just so well written like you can see that it's always there and building its way up ever since volume one especially ever since volume two so it is just so great Blake and Yang they're yin and yang they're beauty and the beast they complement each other so well and it is just so great like I'm gonna make a video about this, like I said I'm gonna make a separate video about this, but like that's why I love Bumblebee, it's the best ship that I've seen so far, I've never been invested in, in a ship like that before, it's just so good. And like I said, I only ship Renora besides Bumblebee. Oh boy, I don't think I'm gonna... I'll be able to answer to all of these questions guys, this video is long already, but let's see. What are your hopes for volume 7 and do you think the team will get new outfits? Blake gets a new weapon. My hopes are to discover Atlas in more detail, to learn more about um, Weiss's mom since we know she's an alcoholic and like just... I want an arc focused on Weiss because like we already got volumes that are focused on Blake and Yang and now it's and Ruby in volume 6 and like it's Weiss's turn like it's her time to shine in my opinion I want to learn more about her family I personally think 
that Winter Maiden could be her mom, for instance. I mean, that would be so interesting to see. And I want to see the racism towards Faunus in Atlas. I mean, I think the lower part of Atlas, and you know, it's a floating island, and the floating part is where the rich people live, and on the ground they're working Faunus in factories and you know they're being really awful towards them like you can understand from Adam's Scar Shiny Dust Company I want to see some more stuff about those I want to see their new outfits like Team Ruby they, they deserve new outfits and yeah I think they're gonna get new outfits because Carrie Bird basically confirmed that in the latest episode of Ruby Rewind he confirmed that they're gonna get new outfits. And uh, I think Blake's gonna get a new weapon. Um, but it, it might just, I mean, but they might just repair Gamble Shroud and, you know, upgrade the weapon. If you know what I mean. Because, you know, Gamble Shroud really fits her fighting style well. And they're the extensions of their soul. Like, weapons are so important in Ruby. So I think that. Gamble Shroud is gonna be around, but it's gonna get an upgrade. Oh god, this is a hard question. If you had the Lantern Relic from Ruby, what three questions would you ask? Okay, first of all, I would ask when I'm gonna die, so that I can plan my life based on that date. Like, if I'm gonna die in like a year or like five years from now on, I would live my life based on that, you know? And that would help me plan stuff. <laughs> um. And I would definitely ask something about how the universe was made because I'm so curious about stuff like that. I mean, I would love to get more information about the universe and I would ask how to make a time machine. That, that's what I would be asking because I would love to experience some stuff in the past. Like when I'm talking about the past, I'm, I'm talking about like Roman Empire and stuff like that and like... I would love to see dinosaurs, and I would love to see the future, and I would love to see the colonies on Mars thanks to that time machine. You know, these three would be my questions, probably. How do you think Winter would react when she hears about Weiss and the crew have been up to now that they're in Atlas? I would say, that's my sister. You go, girl. <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking she would be like that. She would be proud. She would be proud. I mean, she even helped her sister to get away from their home at Atlas. So I'm sure she would be proud. I mean, she would act like she's mad, but I'm sure she would, deep down, she would be proud of her sister. Favorite off screen character? Raven. Definitely Raven. I love Raven. Do you ship White Rose or ship White or Ruby with anybody? No, I don't ship White Rose and I don't ship White or Ruby with anybody. But like I like I said, I don't know, maybe not some dolls for Ruby, but I just I don't know, I don't ship them with anyone and I don't ship White Rose. Do you think the theory about Summer still being alive is true? I don't think she's alive because if she was alive I'm sure Raven would know since she had a portal to Summer and when she lost that portal she was sure that she, like Summer was dead. I mean she's blaming Ospin for Summer's death, I mean Raven, and if Summer were alive I'm sure Raven would know and wouldn't say stuff like that about Ospin, that's why I think she's definitely dead. Any other question? I know it's hard to choose only one song when it comes to your favorites, but can you tell me your favorite Ruby songs from these categories? Oh my goodness, there are a lot of categories here. Okay, favorite theme character song, main characters. Okay, I love Weiss's songs, but I just love I Burn so much, so I'm gonna go with I Burn. Favorite, favorite theme character song, secondary characters. I'm gonna go with Sacrifice, which is, I think, um, a Raven song. I just love Sacrifice a lot. Favorite duets? Nevermore. Definitely nevermore. Favorite opening? This will be the day. It's always gonna be my favorite. I feel like it's always gonna be my favorite. Happiest song? BMBLB. Saddest song? All That Matters. 
favorite ending credit song. Okay, I love like all of the songs you listed here. Like I, I love Wings, I love Sacrifice, Divide, Armed and Ready, This Time, Nevermore. Oh, uh, okay, I love Nevermore. Actually, it's my f like it could be my favorite, but I've already I've already said that in another one you asked. It's my favorite duet. I guess I would go with Armed and Ready, maybe. But who am I kidding? It's never more. <laughs> it's never more. Favorite song score wise. What do you mean by score wise? I don't know what score wise means. Favorite Lamar song. Caffeine, I burn, like morning fowl's light, ignite. I burn. It's I burn. But I also love like morning fowl's night lots. Since I already said I burn, I'm gonna go with Like Morning Follows Light because I love listening to that song. Favorite song from each volume. Oh god. You can exclude volume 6 because the soundtrack is not out yet. Actually, for volume 6, I'm thinking one of these three is gonna be my favorite song. The first one is the one that played in the train fight in volume 6, episode 1. It was so good, I love the piano in that song. The other one is, obviously, Nevermore, and the third one is Ruby's song, Indomitable, because I love the meaning behind it, I love how they used Monty's code, and it was just, it, it gave me chills. I'm sure one of these three are gonna be my favorite, but for each volume, I need to check Spotify. Okay, right now I'm looking Ruby Volume 1 soundtrack on Spotify, and there are a lot of good songs here. Why are you doing this to me? Okay. Um. I really love I May Fall. I mean, I May Fall could be it, but. I also love, like, Mirror Mirror and I Burn and From Shadows and This Will Be The Day. Gold is also here. Like, I love gold, especially the acoustic version. Oh shit, this is gonna be tough. Let's go with I May Fall, because that song gave me chills in volume 3 when Velvet was fighting with that robot thing, I forgot its name. I May Fall. For volume 1, I'm gonna go with I May Fall. For volume 2, I'm looking... Sacrifice. Definitely Sacrifice for volume 2. For volume 3, I'm gonna go, go with I'm the One. It's Mercury and Emerald's song and I just love that song so much. For volume four, again, a hard one because I love most of the songs. Like, let's just live, it's just so emotional, so great. Like, Morning Follows Night, I love the melody of that song. Bad Luck Charm, I love it. This Life Is Mine, I love it. I'm done already, I love it. BMBLB, freaking BMBLB, you know. Okay, I love BMBLB to death, like, and I listen to it all the time, but in terms of, like, melody-wise, I'm gonna go with This Life Is Mine, because it is epic. And for Volume 5, I'm looking... Okay, I, I love all of the songs here, like, I love Smile, Ilya's song, it was just so beautiful. All that matters, freaking all that matters, it killed me, you know. Gold acoustic version, I just love that song so much. But I'm gonna go with Path to Isolation. Because, again, it was an epic song, I just love Weiss's theme songs, it was such a great song. But yeah, oh boy, this was a hard question, but thank you so much for asking. Makoar asked me, when and how did you discover Ruby? How far back in terms of volumes was it? And which point when watching did you know the series is something special and you'd be part of the fandom? What sold you? Okay, so I explained this in detail, like I said in my um, volume 5 soundtrack reaction. If you go to my volume 5 soundtrack reaction and go to that part after I listen to All That Matters, you can, you can find the story in more detail. Right now I'm really tired and like it would take a lot of time to explain. But yeah, in terms of volumes, it was the hiatus up after volume 4. And I was doing my internship in a different city and I was looking for something to watch while I was sharing a room, a small room with a friend of mine. We were doing our 
film internship together and I just started watching Ruby because I was seeing some stuff about Ruby on Tumblr. I mean, I was on Tumblr at the time as well and I checked YouTube and I saw that the episodes episode lengths were really short so I was like, okay, I'm gonna watch this because I had no energy after I got back from work because internship was really hard and then I finished all of the volumes in a couple of days and like, you know, I watched volume 3 and I was like when I was watching volume 3 after one point I gasped and my friend woke up because it was in the middle of the night and she was sleeping and Heroes and Monsters that episode sold me that episode sold me because you know I was just watching Ruby to pass time but like I said I explain this in more detail in my volume 5 soundtrack reaction if you're curious you can go and check that out also do you hope for Kruby to do anything different in volume 7 compared to volume 6 uh yes I would love to explore the city more like we've seen Mistral but it's like we haven't actually seen it like Mistral is a huge kingdom but we didn't get a lot of stuff and I know that it's, it's because of the time like you know we have a specific time for all of the episodes and I, I know it's because of time I mean we have a certain amount of time for each of the episodes and the number of episodes are also limited so I know why they couldn't show Mistral to us much but I really would love to see Atlas in more detail compared to Mr. Land Whale because I'm so curious about the world in Ruby and I seriously want to explore it more you know because like I said I'm just so curious but other than that I think volume 6 was great like it was amazing so that's the only thing that I can think of at the moment how do you think people of Atlas will react to Blake um I think there's gonna be some people who's gonna be racist towards Blake and we're gonna see some Yang and Blake's moments because of that because I'm sure Yang's gonna be really protective of Blake so yeah I'm thinking that there are gonna be some racists I mean Blake's gonna face some racism I mean I'm both sad and happy about this because I really want to see the discrimination against Bonus but I also want Blake to be happy so yeah and do you think they're gonna judge Weiss for being friends with a Faunus? I'm sure they will. I I'm sure Jacques, Schnee, and Whitley, they're gonna judge her for it. I'm sure of it. And how do you think Weiss will react? What's that supposed to mean? That's how she's gonna react. You can be sure of that. Love your videos, Brazil. Love you. Oh, thank you so much. Much love from here, Brazil. First, you're amazing and I love your channel. Oh, thank you so much. I, I see your comments around and thank you so much for your support. Seriously, I remember you. Now, how do you think Atlas will react seeing Yang because of the Vidal Festival and what happened to Mercury? Have a nice day. Oh, thank you. I hope you're having a nice day as well. I really hope they're gonna remember Yang from the Vidal Festival because that was one of the last things that they saw from Whale. I mean, I would love to see some people judging Yang because of that, but I don't know if you're gonna see that kind of a thing because, you know, there are a lot of things that's been going on in the show and I don't think that's gonna be a focus. I mean, I'm thinking that the focus is gonna be Weiss and the Atlas, Atlas arc, but I seriously would love to see that. I mean, I was actually hoping to see that in Mistral but we didn't see it so I don't think we're gonna see it in Mistral either I mean if we would have seen it we would have seen it in Mistral arc because you know they were also watching um because they were also watching the Vital Festival but no one reacted badly towards Yang so yeah thank you so much for your question how do you think Ruby will react when she sees Penny oh my god oh my god Dude, that's gonna kill me. I'm sure we're gonna see Penny and the person who built Penny and that's not gonna be the Penny that we know. It's gonna be a different Penny because Penny had a soul, she had a semblance and 
It's gonna destroy Ruby. Seriously, I'm sure it's gonna destroy Ruby. I mean, even hearing lines of her like "I'm combat ready" and stuff, even even those stuff are hurting her. So so who knows how she's gonna react once she sees another version of Penny? Like it's it's gonna be so hard to watch. It's gonna be so hard to watch, man. Thank you for the question. Okay, um, I think I went through a lot of questions. I know there's like a couple of more questions that I couldn't answer, but I've been answering the questions for like two hours now and I'm really tired because it's 4 a.m. But yeah, thank you all so much for the questions. I mean, you guys know how much I love Ruby and I love talking about it. So it was a pleasure for me to like answering to you guys' comments. But I tend to ramble a lot and this video is gonna be long and I'm so sorry. It's also gonna be hard to edit it and <laughs> I'm not looking forward to edit this video. But yeah, um, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I mean, I hope you guys like grab some popcorn and some drinks to watch this video because oh god, it's gonna be long. Perhaps I can divide it into two or I don't know. I really don't know. But yeah, um, this was me answering to you guys' Ruby related questions. I hope you guys have enjoyed it and I hope I will see you guys on the next one. Take care.